Hello everybody, this is Jay Brayton with another series of Dominions 4, this time I'm playing as Kailasa in a game hosted at some awful forums uh, with three different mods running. So the mods we're running are um, Worthy Heroes, uh, somewhat um, well-adopted mod that basically adds a bunch of new heroes for the nations. Um, for Kailasa, uh, I believe the only national hero they had before um, the installation of the mod is a Blood 3 um, a Fallen Celestial type I'm, uh, and they are kind of useful for getting yourself some blood income but uh, Kailasa is not uh, like its kind of follow-on nations of Patala and Bandar Log uh, in that it doesn't have the same uh, demonic national demonic summons as um, Lanka, who is its uh, kind of uh, antithesis and main opponent in um, EA. So that's useful for stuff like uh, giving your um, Yaksha uh, a uh, kind of vector to mass stuff like um, Demon Knights, who are very high protection uh, demonic unit with fear, which is a very powerful ability when stacked. Um, on multiple units at once, uh, but it doesn't uh, mean that you get stuff like uh, Raksharaja, which are a very, uh, very dangerous kind of uh, uh, demon summon and, and very massable too. Anyway, um, this is my god for the game. It's called Peak Kailasa Bless and Demilich. Um, Kailasa Sacreds, as we'll see in a minute, um, are. Uh, come in a few different flavors. Uh, mainly, they have all. They don't have very much protection, uh, and one of them has a missile weapon, which is partly what the uh, Death Nine is for. Uh, Death Nine is also for casting a whole bunch of nasty globals, uh, including Burden of Time, Utter Dark. Uh, there are a couple of new ones in one of the other mods we're using, uh, called Magic uh, Enhanced, I believe is the name of the mod, um, which adds a slew of uh, new spells. Uh, to the game. Uh, quite a lot for some of the nations that I would say didn't need help, like Pan, uh, but also a few for uh, a few other nations, like uh, all of the underwater nations get a whole bunch more uh, versatility, I would say. And the other mod we're using is uh, JBBM, which is J. Brayton's Balance mod, um, which was actually made by me, and it's kind of a compliment that someone is using it uh, in, um, in their games. Uh, as a balance mod, it um, mainly provides nerfs to a few nations, especially um, all flavors of Pan, uh, most of the Varnia nations, and um, also to Zabalba, uh, whose Zots, in my opinion, were a lot too cheap. So they've all had cost increases and stat changes and so on. Um, for Kailasa specifically, um, there aren't very many changes. Uh, the one change that matters quite a lot is the change to Gurus. Gurus before were a S2 N1 mage um, and they are now an S1 N1 um, and then they get a chance at water, uh, astral, nature and earth um, which changes their magic uh, abilities quite a lot um, and I think makes them a more useful kind of mage. Um, the Kailasa kind of uh, tree of nations um, are some of the weakest in the game, I would say. In, in terms of um, the recorded win percentages, I don't think Kailasa has had a single <laughs> recorded win in Dominion's history for Dominion's 4. Um, uh, I'm taking them as a kind of weak nation just because I don't want to be accused of uh, <laughs> picking, picking a, a nation that's been changed quite a lot, but um, when I connect to the game um, and I get to talking about all of the uh, other nations that are playing, uh, I'll try and explain the changes that I've made to them. Uh, it's by no means complete, it's uh, still in an early version of the mod. Um, I've done quite a few nations, but there are still quite a lot, such as a lot of the Celtic nations that I haven't really touched, uh, except with a few kind of um, uh, changes to magic such as Rain of Stones that affect them quite strongly by changing it to a uh, two gem spell rather than a one gem spell which means that uh, Earth 1 and Air 1 Mage uh, can no longer cast it but 
I'll get to that when I get to that. Um, this guy, <laughs> my pretender, sorry to come back to it. Um, the bless he's got is a kind of light bless for actual combat power, uh, but it's quite important for survivability. Um, the Kylaster is one of those nations that's quite difficult to build a bless around. Um, it has quite a lot of sacred summons, um, but the actual uh, like cap summons um, and the else cap uh, units. Um, the temptation is kind of there to go for an air nine bless because they typically have uh, low or no protection whatsoever. Um, but a uh, an aura of awe, which means that the enemy often uh, will refuse to attack them. Um, so if you go for an air bless, you'll be much better against mundane uh, missile attacks, which is quite important because the um, uh, vast majority of independents will have some kind of uh, missile attack. The other alternative is some kind of regen based bless, um, but the nation doesn't have any terribly good chassis for that. I think that's really a problem with the uh, selection of gods they have in general. Uh, I think that's something I may address in, in a later version of my mod, but that's by the by. Um, so I went for a, a death bless because it's a dual purpose survivability and also um, a good offensive bless. You often have quite a few attacks on your uh, sacred units as Kailasa. Uh, in terms of scales, uh, I think it's at uh, about a minus 15% income, uh, or 10 actually. Um, so the turmoil uh, is not really a particularly big deal um, for turmoil versus order. Uh, I'm not terribly worried about any uh, chaos powered units because uh, I don't believe Lankers in the game, although I, I may be completely wrong. And they're the main people who benefit or suffer from that. Um, your, the majority of your mundane units, at least as Kailasa, are relatively cheap. Um, having more gold, of course, is always helpful um, because it gives you much better access to um, a, a wider variety of uh, indies and so on. But with the changes to the Guru, especially, um, I think they are a little more, uh, little more easy to to take in a. In a, in a lower gold environment because otherwise you'd have to really rely on stuff like uh, trying to find some Jade Amazons for uh, non astral magic outside of the capital. Um, the Sloth is a very easy choice. Um, the units, uh, the factions units are all pretty low resources. Uh, heat, uh, you start at Heat 2, starting at Heat 3 uh, is a 5% income drop uh, across um, I'd say about three quarters of the year, um, but in winter it'll actually help your income a little bit. And also it precludes rushing uh, across rivers. Um, Kailas is actually quite vulnerable to an early rush by a whole bunch of factions. Um, before in the mid game it can kind of do stuff, um, has good strategic mobility because of all the astral magic and uh, their cap only mages. Um, are quite strong in the mid game in terms of the spells they have so they can for example, cast um, Earthquake quite easily and stuff like that. Uh, and then late again, uh, you kind of fall off due to a lack of death and blood access. But that's part of the reason I took a uh, big death bless on my Pretender. Uh, the growth, I always find growth very helpful. Uh, luck 3 is goes well with turmoil because it increases the amount of events you get. And turmoil and luck is a perfectly acceptable combination for income. Uh, you just get kind of pseudo income through luck events and magic 3 because you have to build temples to get most of the um, mages so any kind of way you can help out the um, uh, kind of RP per gold efficiency taking that into account is uh, very valuable um, in addition a combination of magic and luck 3 uh, often gives you uh, a bunch of off path mages through the event system so that's uh, another good reason to do it Okay, let's uh, go into the game. Do do do. Map games here. Game modded. Look away now. Anyone I'm playing against. And there we go. You can look back. Uh, so this is my capital. Uh, this is the map. The map, by the way, is very beautiful. Uh, I don't think it'll be. Um, uh, 
I mean, it doesn't appear to be one of those terribly well balanced maps, but it is very fetching. Um, the problem for us, though, is that we're stuck in uh, wasteland hell. This is the about the third game in a row I've had this happen to me. This isn't a random map, so um, that's just one of those. But uh, yeah, that is an abundance of crap provinces to go through. So, but waste here, waste here, waste here, and then like mountains and forests here. Um, I have okay movement through forests. Uh, mountains I can kind of do because of my heat dominion, um, although I don't have very much uh, innate mountain access, but the wastelands is just, um, that's going to be a bugbear all game. Um, and also because of the fact that I'm in the mountains, uh, means I actually have less, um, uh, less fort admin in my capital, uh, which slightly reduces my gold relative to um, any nation that hasn't started in in a uh, province like uh, mountains or wastes or anywhere else you can't get uh, any roads in your capital. Uh, it's not a big amount but um, it's just one of those little things. So uh, my profit is going to be uh, just my Bandar commander. He's called Stuck in MM1 Waste, please help. Uh, the problem for Kailasa, actually, and to some extent Lanka, um, is that your uh, starting commander, uh, in my case Bandar one, um, even when turned into a prophet, doesn't have any uh, relevant leadership for your um, uh, non non monkey units. So we have uh, as our commanders in the capital. We've got a scout. Everyone gets a scout. Get commander. This guy's um, recruitable in all forests. They're perfectly acceptable leaders, and they're stealthy uh, as well as having forest survival. Um, they have low MR and kind of mediocre morale, um, but they're not expensive, which is good. And uh, yeah, the stealth can be quite useful. Uh, you then got a Banda commander, who is a very good commander. Um, they increase your morale, which you desperately need on the faction. Uh, you then have a yogi who is your typical research mage, uh, 7 RP, and they're an astral mage. Um, they have reincarnation, which is a bizarre thing that apparently increases dominion if they die or whatever, but um, it's not exactly something you can get much mileage out of, like naturally. Uh, you have a guru, as I've said, um, they have uh, different magic compared to normal. Normally they're fixed, and because of their fixed pass, they're actually. Uh, slightly more expensive normally as well. Um, these guys also have uh, increased map movement uh, relative to what they did in the past, uh, just due to their mod changes. Um, Gyeka General um, is your out of four priest. Um, Kailas is a very strange faction in terms of priests. They don't really have any um, other than this guy. Uh, he's a level one priest. They're slow to recruit. Uh, they have okay magic leadership, which is good, uh, and they have. Um, relatively good normal leadership but they are a bit pricey uh, 110 and they're slow to recruit which is just a bit of a pain in the neck in general and then you have your Yaksha and Yakshini uh, who are your cap onlys uh, Yaksha are very good um, Earth 3, Nature 1 and then any of these uh, same basic se uh, selection as the Guru which is the reason I gave them those, uh, those parts um, if they have Astral uh, that can be kind of annoying because you uh, are then a little bit vulnerable to magic jewel if you're leading them as a um, well, if you're using them as a uh, more or less lone magic leader. But if you take them with a bunch of your other commanders, uh, the risk is certainly lessened, and uh, it means that they can communion up for some really big spells, which is very handy. Uh, Yakshini is basically the same mage, but with water instead. Uh, water, I would say, is overall a slightly less useful path. Um, than Earth for battle magic, um, but it does depend, um, and you probably end up wanting one of each at least uh, just for rituals. Um, in terms of our units, we've got Marcata who are <laughs> kind of funny but not very good. Um, they've got very low MR and morale, uh, they're basically free at 5 gold, um, but they are undisciplined so your morale is actually really six because uh, they have yeah, an innate tendency to go into skirmish formation um, and six morale is uh, terrifyingly low. Then got Marcata archers who are basically useless because they are a um, missile unit with a pretty poor missile weapon. 
Um, and because of their uh, undisciplined nature, it means you can't give them specific uh, fire orders, unlike the Atavi, who are quite handy. Um, they're a gold, they're stealthy, so you can lead them with an Atavi chieftain. Um, and they're j just a very standard uh, kind of archer unit. Uh, their low MR and morale are sometimes a problem, but if uh, you're getting to the back end of a battle and these guys are in melee, well, you may well have lost anyway. Um, one of the things that can be a problem for uh, Kailasa and indeed all of the monkey factions uh, is that because of the um, animal nature of your units and the innate paths on your non-yogi mages um, they have quite a nasty tendency to cast a spell called um, berserkers um, or uh, I believe there's another version for animals but in any case uh, it's an early one um, which uh, if you place them in the in the back lines they are quite apt to make your archers berserk uh, which means they can't shoot and they just start charging all over the place that's quite annoying but um, it's just one of them you just got to factor it into how the faction plays uh, Atavi infantry are pretty bad I would say um, the archers at least have a use as archers these guys with sticks and stones um, if you can get a flaming arrows caster are quite useful um, because they have just multiple uh, attacks uh, but other than that, um, pretty bad. The buckler is your standard shield on the uh, monkey factions. Uh, for Bandalov and Patala, I added a, um, a Venara, who's basically an Atavi, uh, with a tower shield um, and uh, the standard uh, scale mail, I think it's called uh, Halbergian, which is the normal uh, armor type for Venara. Um, but for EA, uh, I left them out. Um, I may change that in a future version. I just didn't want to change it um, just before this game. Um, and then your other guys are these Bandar guys. Uh, like Bandar archers are uh, Longbowmen. I would almost never use them though, just because the uh, cost is basically double that of a uh, Atavi. Uh, Bandar warriors can be kind of helpful. Their six and stone attack is actually quite powerful at 12 damage uh, with two per turn especially if you buff them with your uh, Yaksha using the strength of giants uh, they can be really quite um, quite a powerful asset and their resource cost is also very low um, Bandar Swordsmen have a niche use as a um, uh, kind of expansion uh, blocking type troop so if you have you know, say three or four of these guys on Guard Commander if you put them in uh, weird formation as well because they have um, decent morale so they can they can often take the hit and if they're with a bandar commander anyway their morale will be quite sufficient um, you can use them to lure enemy bofar uh, away from all of your uh, unarmored stuff which we'll get onto right now so I've got Gayaka who are a uh, two attack um, uh, sacred unit they have all they are magic beings um, and with a bless they're going to be at uh, attack and defense 13 uh, even before any um, experience stars so that will relatively quickly rise to uh, attack and defense 14 or 15 uh, which is really quite strong um, they have a decent strength score and they're overall pretty good um, but because of their magic uh, being nature they are a little bit annoying to uh, march around the place sometimes you'll see people use yogi to schlep around um, yogi for me at 10 magic leadership is uh, kind of insufficient. Uh, Guru, who, who is the guy I'm uh, building on 10-1, uh, are a little bit more helpful. Um, Yoana are the uh, archetypal uh, non-summoned uh, unit these guys will often build. Um, they have a falchion, which is a much higher damage attack than a um, spear from a from one of the Gyaka, uh, which comes in handy, and they have the kick. So two different damage types, um, relatively high strength attack and defense scores, all very good, um, and they just have generally good um, movement, encumbrance, and so on. So um, these guys are well worth building. Uh, and on a better faction, uh, it would probably propel them to being really good. Um, as it stands, they uh, are a little bit vulnerable to 
um, well, all kinds of stuff, but especially the uh, mass bowfire early. Uh, the faction doesn't get all that good access to um, air magic. It does have it through Conjuration. There are these guys called Kinara. Um, but they are a bit of a faff to mass because your gem income is um, so spread across the uh, nature astral and um, earth types that uh, accruing the necessary uh, necessary amount for a uh, Kinara is um, a little bit problematic. I mean, it's only 25, but you have quite a lot of um, uh, important stuff uh, like uh, the uh, Asura and so on that you actually want to, and uh, Apsara especially, um, that you kind of want to mass because they're very useful um, uh, standard bearing units so they can increase your uh, morale on the majority of stuff. And then you've Honor Archers, who are the unit that people put an F9 Bless on uh, Kailasa for, but I, I don't think I ever would. Um, the Longbow uh, only has so much um, so much utility, and although they have two attacks in hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, they are a capital one unit, so they're, um, uh, I would say, a little bit uh, <laughs> questionable to put a, an F9 Bless on for. Uh, I guess it, you know, would be theoretically useful against uh, Nif Niflheim, but um, I mean Niflheim has pretty high protection and is generally uh, going to be a threat to your nation, uh, whether or not you have um, flaming longbows or not. So let's see who we're fighting against. Uh, so we've got uh, Suramacia, uh who you may recall from my last LP that was uh, tragically terminated due to a uh, recording error and not wanting to have to re-record audio for a bunch of episodes um, <laughs> but we know how they play uh, Chen Shi who are a very standard human faction um, these guys are uh, quite significantly um, improved I would say in JVBM uh, normally they have a couple of quite weak mages outside of the capitals and in their capital they have a more interesting guy called a master of the five elements uh, I've moved the Master of the Five Elements outside of the capital uh, and also um, reduced the price of Warriors of the Five Elements back to how they were uh, before a patch that changed them from, I think, 26 gold to 35, uh, which was uh, a little bit too much, I'd say, in terms of an increase, because um, the faction wasn't exactly a powerhouse before that. Uh, for Suramacia, the main change I did in JVBM is the change to Soothsayers. Uh, who previously cost 35 gold uh, and now costs 45. It's not a huge change, but um, they were a little bit too good for a uh, in terms of pricing for a mage that didn't need a, a land to build. Uh, Katis, I've barely changed at all in JVBM, but it is a um, primarily a death and nature faction in this era um, with a bit of water as well. They are kind of based off a uh, Egyptian. Um, kind of lizard type uh, theocracy they have um, this guy called Lizard's Kings I believe is still available in the EA Katis. I'm not a massive expert on them by any means um, so they have a recruitable H3 which is useful for uh, trying to um, claim thrones and so on as well as just generally fight the undead uh, we have this guy uh, playing Agatha uh, Agatha is uh, improved in JBBM by the unit's uh, attack scores generally being increased. Um, before the mod, they actually had very, very low uh, attack skills, which made them quite uncompetitive until you started just uh, fully relying on summons uh, outside of their siege power. Siege power isn't changed. I think that was a uh, interesting facet of the nation, but the uh, attack skill is generally up by one or two points. Uh, which means they're much more um, consistent against uh, even independent troops. Uh, we have this guy called Oki playing Tien and Nog. Uh, TNN is basically unchanged, um, apart from the uh, change to Rain of Stones that I mentioned, uh, which is actually quite significant for the faction because previously most of their, uh, or at least I believe one in three of their research mages, uh, was quite capable of Rain of Stones in. Uh, now I believe it's only available on uh, a couple of commanders, I think that Banshee maybe can do it, and the um, 
uh, actual Tuatha commanders who are the uh, I think they're called Re maybe in this era who are the uh, cap only she uh, she unlike uh, Vanir I haven't changed their defense stat uh, I probably will go back in and change that uh, in JBBM the Vanir nation's uh, defense stats are lowered by a couple of points um, just because the uh, in a mirror image uh, actually gave them a very 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 significant advantage in melee versus everyone else uh, which meant they were more or less irresistible in a rush unless you had massed uh, missile weapons uh, which was kind of cheesy um, now you can still kind of fight against them but I mean they're not by any means weak um, Fomoria again is a nation I haven't changed very much um, they are a nation that's uh, made up largely of Veerbolg um, or that's how most people play them um, and also some size 4 giants called Fomorians uh, quite similar to Garthra in terms of being very good at sieges um, their units are often afflicted and generally a bit broken and screwed up uh, I really like Fomoria, they're a, a good faction and uh, they have an interesting mix of death and air magic which means they have quite a strong um, strategic mobility and also just generally good kind of level of power they're quite an enjoyable faction to play because they have uh, good access to a lot of different parts through um, the combination of uh, death nature and um, air magic uh, yeah good faction and they can sail um, they don't however have glamour on anything that's um, sacred apart from a specific cap only commander and uh, the Glamoured units, they get a cap only as well. Uh, Niflheim is a uh, giant faction. Um, I am not a great expert on Niflheim. Uh, their Niflheim giants, who are their cap only unit, are very, very strong in um, a cold dominion. They get a couple of points uh, per piece of cold per armor, um, which is means they're basically impossible to fight on their own territory. Uh, except with very specific tactics uh, but they're vulnerable to fire and in a hot dominion the um, uh, protection of the Rama is significantly curtailed then you have us uh, Kailasabless uh, I've already spoken more than enough about uh, for Yomi uh, Yomi is not really changed very much uh, by the mod um, uh, unless I'm not sure if this version includes the change that I did that changes their Chaos Path to Sloth Power. Uh, I'm not sure it's in version 3. Um, I think it might just be in version 4, which is not currently being used, um, which changes the faction quite a lot because it means they can fight uh, off of uh, the usual kind of turmoil and order based thing. Uh, the faction previously had some problems in that it relies quite a lot on, on being rich um, because all of its uh, demons are very gold intensive. Um, but they take a very large penalty when actually um, uh, fighting in order territory, which is uh, a problem for them. Uh, so I made a mod about a million years ago um, that changed the uh, Chaos Power for Sloth Power, um, uh, uh, which was a mod commander didn't actually work for about five versions of Dominions, which was good fun. Uh, but now it does, so there we go. Um, if it isn't included in this version of JBBM, and I'm not entirely sure that it is, uh, it will be in the next version when that comes out. And then Atlantis, which uh, is quite significantly changed by JBBM. Um, in the vanilla game, I'd say it's probably the weakest faction in the game uh, because its research mages are horribly, horribly expensive. Uh, it cost 215 gold for a uh, mage with very variable uh, power level uh, underwater and on land. Um, their sacreds costed way too much resources. They cost 56 in the base game uh, for an MR10 unit, which is pretty bad. The faction in general has problems with uh, magic resist, uh, which is very inconvenient for them, but very good for us if we run into them. Uh, but in JBBM, um, a couple of big things change them. So uh, the Coral Priests, who are their um, normal priest unit are changed from just being a holy unit to also having water one uh, which means they are a relatively cost effective uh, research unit compared to what they had before um, and in addition as with uh, all um, underwater nations I made sure they had uh, good 
uh, amount of land recruitment. So they can always get a scout, they can always get a commander, and they have a couple of mages and a priest on land. Um, that is shared by all land water nations. Um, if for better or worse, I, I'm very ambivalent in general about underwater factions and the role they have in the game, but I felt if we're going to have them in, uh, might as well make them um, more than just something that's kind of a distraction for one or two players and then um, kind of more or less tails off because they don't have any recruitment on land. Uh, so um, let's see what the map is like. I have no idea where Atlantis would actually spawn. I don't know if there's any water. Oh, there is. Okay, this is this lake thing is water. Okay, gotcha. And there's one down there as well. Okay, so there's actually quite a lot of water on the map. Um, I feel like Atlantis is going to have a pretty good time, as is Agatha, actually. So, Agatha is going to be in a cave, if it can be. Um, I mean, all this is a cave. But I don't know how much of it counts as a cave. Okay, most of it does. Um, oh, this is an even worse map than I thought it is then. Because caves are... Um, uh, relatively easy to take over. Um, so, I... One of the main changes of JBBM um, is that the... Um, independent Zots uh, no longer exist. Uh, I replaced them with uh, an indie pop type called um, Bat Tribe, uh, who are basically some guys with um, a partial dark vision, uh, stone spear, and a uh, stone shield, as you would find on the um, uh, Unfrozen Warriors. So they actually have a, a relatively good um, shield. Um, they're not super competent in. Uh, in a battle outside of a cave, but in a cave they're um, they're relatively good. Uh, but the the reason I changed that is because uh, independent zots are um, uh, an absolute scourge. Basically, if you are playing multiplayer, um, <laughs> they're really cheap. Uh, they're stealthy. They're flying. Um, they have all the same problems that uh, Zvalba actually has as as a faction in general, uh, and everyone can have a go at them and they almost always basically supplant your um, national troops uh, more or less no matter who you're playing um, unless you actually are Zabalba um, just because of how uh, how useful it is to have a, a cheap um, stealthy raiding uh, actually I'm not even sure they're stealthy but certainly a, a cheap flying raiding unit um, which is a really hard thing to deal with for most factions uh, unless they cast Perpetual Storm but anyone who can cast Perpetual Storm um, is probably going to have an even better raiding game to be fair than, than any indie Zolt player anyway, um, so all that aside uh, what that basically means is that all of these cave promises are going to be full of stuff like uh, Kooni for example who are pretty easy to kill um, uh, independent Bat Tribe um, Loveborn, who I made uh, much cheaper um, because previously they cost 50% again as much as a um, Abyssian unit uh, despite only being about as good as an Abyssian unit um, so I thought, take that out, that's just, that's just nonsense um, and yes, yeah, so they're going to have a, a whole bunch of territory and uh, caves are pretty good resource uh, provinces, so whoever gets all this stuff is going to be uh, in decent nick, I would say. Uh, for us, we have uh, planes, which uh, could be just about anything, some wastes, which are often populated by uh, undead, uh, although sometimes they aren't. Um, this troll peaks uh, uh, thrown here, so let's see where that is in terms of the order. Okay, that seems like a pretty, um, pretty high on the list, so it might well be something like flames or pestilence. If it's pestilence, that's going to be annoying because I'm not going to want to take that because um, that'll uh, that'll create all kinds of events as well as increasing your um, uh, death. Uh, well, it, it basically moves your, your scales one towards death, which is no good for your income. Actually, the exact same thing happened in. Um, uh, <laughs> Sora Mesha game uh, that was ended um, by a uh, server crash 
where uh, the nation's income was um, substantially reduced over time. Anyway, I've probably talked for like a pretty a good half hour or something by this point, so um, I'm probably going to call it call it a day for this one. Uh, so Chimwe, uh, the Marcata Scout, is going over here on uh, retreat orders. Should be relatively safe. Um, there's only really one pop type that will lead to his death, uh, which is independent raptors. Um, and even if it does, um, so be it. It just means we know what's there and we know it's a little bit dangerous. Um, in terms of mercenaries, uh, there's the wetlands. Um, they are slightly better than they used to be <laughs> due to the changes to Agathans in general. But um, I thought it was quite important to get a decent start in terms of uh, building up some Yuvana and uh, Guru. Um, so thank you very much for watching, I've been Jay Britton, and goodbye.